Hi folks, good evening and welcome to another Sunday evening and lockdown with Bilston Road service. Uh, I hope you're all keeping well and that uh, you're keeping in good spirits and getting to enjoy some of the tremendous weather that we're experiencing at the minute. Um, at this evening's service we're going to have uh, the Lord's message through Andy and we're going to have two pieces of praise as well. Um, our first piece is called I Know Who Holds Tomorrow and it's been chosen by Arthur and our second piece after the message is What Love My God and that is selected by Billy and Marilyn. Um, both of these pieces um, I've just listened to and they're very very nice. Uh, some excellent words in them and very helpful to let us meditate and come into the presence of the Lord. Um, so as we begin our service this evening, uh, we'll just open in a wee word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this another day. We thank you for all that you've given us, Lord. We thank you for this this sunshine, this opportunity that we have to spend time outdoors and, and experience some of your awesome creation, Lord. Lord, I pray that as the weeks of lockdown continue on and as we continue to be distant from those we love and those that we care for, I pray that you would remain with us all, that you would continue to give us strength and give us comfort, Lord, and, and that you would continue to speak to us through these messages that we get, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the week we've just had, the, the message of hope and the, the different words that came from, from those who testified and from Andy and, and Willis each evening, Lord. I thank you for those people and I thank you for the words that they, that, that they spoke, Lord. I pray that that message has went out and that souls have been touched, Lord. I pray that seeds have been sown and that we would see the fruit of those seeds come to come to pass, Lord, and and that we would see a real revival for for you, Lord. That the the world would move forward in a in a new way in a new direction, Lord. Lord, I pray for those among us who who are ill or going through treatment or who are recovering, Lord, I pray that you would you would remain with those people. Lord, I pray for those who have lost loved ones. I pray that during this tough time for them that you would be with them and you would be comforting them now, comforting them, Lord, and that I pray that you would Place your servant near them and that you would give them wisdom, give them the words to say, the words to, to provide comfort, the words to provide a direction for those people and a future, a bright future for them, Lord. Lord, I pray that we would see this pandemic pass and that once again we would get to meet together to celebrate you together, Lord, to, to praise and, and worship you and to come together in, in, in prayer, Lord. All these things that we, we, we maybe took for granted in the past and now realise just how much it maybe means to us to be together have our, our services of worship and our times of prayer, these things that we may be heavily miss at this time. I pray, Lord, that we would see these times back again before long. Lord, I thank you for, for answered prayer, Lord. I pray that, that in, in recent weeks, we have seen many prayers answered. 
And we thank you for that, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would continue to bless each and every one of us, be with each and every one of us, and that as we continue this service this evening, once again you would speak to us, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, so we'll just continue our service then with our first piece, I Know Who Holds Tomorrow, chosen by Arthur. And now you'll go and see why there's a screaming youngster in the background. See you soon, folks. <laughs>
Well, hello folks, it's good to talk to you again today. Um, this is in the Christian calendar is Pentecost Sunday, uh, where we remember the day of Pentecost. You know, one of the, the most thrilling things to read in uh, the New Testament is the day where the Holy Spirit, the promised Holy Spirit came and indwelt with power from on high the, the believers who were in that upper room. And believers who were anxious and fearful and worried and not sure of what was happening. Jesus had left them and went to heaven and they were on their own, but he had promised that they wouldn't be on their own. He had promised that the Spirit of God would come and empower them. And you know, I want to think about that today for a minute. I want to ask you a question. Who has been the greatest influence for good on your life up to this point? Maybe it's been a parent, mum or a dad. Maybe it's been a granny or a granda. Uh, an uncle or an aunt, maybe it's been a school teacher, a Sunday school teacher maybe, a sports coach, somebody at work, uh, maybe just a good friend or a neighbour, uh, you know, there's people influence us, aren't there, in our life, um, there's people who influence us and have influences, but you know, the greatest influence of all, uh, and the one who influences more than anything is, as a believer, is the spirit of the living God himself, and we, I want to think about that today a minute or two, as Jesus was heading uh, to the cross um, and was setting out in front of the disciples what was to come. We break in here in John chapter 16 and Jesus is telling them that he's has, he has to go and the Spirit of God is going to come. And he says in verse 7, Nevertheless I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the word of sin of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, and of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it on to you. And that is Jesus' words to his disciples. You know, and I want us to think a wee bit today about that because uh, the Spirit of God, Jesus said when he came, would convict of sin. And that's one of the Spirit's jobs. You know, before we become a believer, we need convicted of our sin. We need to realise that we are sinners. And it's the Spirit of God that does that. Before you get saved and this feeling of, uh, you know, you feel bad about yourself and you feel bad about your sin. That's the Spirit of God eliminating your sin and showing you that you are a sinner uh, in need of a Savior. Uh, it convicts you of righteousness. Um, righteousness means right, the right way of living. You're living the wrong way and the Spirit of God shows you the right way. It convicts you of righteousness, the righteousness that you need before God, the righteousness that only can be found in Jesus Christ. Um it convicts you of judgment, the judgment to come. You see, there's judgment coming for the whole world. We're all going to have to stand before God one day and we're going to have to give an account. But if we have Jesus as our Lord and Saviour, we're not going to be judged for past sins. Uh, they're all going to be wiped away and cleansed in the blood of Jesus. And we're not going to have that judgment. So it convicts you of the judgment to come. And the Spirit of God has that work to do in a heart and a life. You know, it convicts of sin. He convicts us of righteousness, the right way we should be living. And he convicts us if we don't, the judgment that is coming. And you know, he's there to guide us and to lead us into all truth. What is truth? The truth is Jesus. Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth and the life. So he points us to Jesus. The Spirit of God points us to Jesus. The Spirit of God relays what God wants us to hear. He doesn't speak in his own authority. We've just read there. But the things that he hears, he relays onto us. The Word of God that you have in front of you in your Bible, sometimes it's hard to understand. But the Spirit of God opens that up to us and he teaches us through that word what God wants us to know. The word of truth, the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He'll take what Jesus said and he'll declare it unto you and unto me and he'll declare that truth into our hearts and he'll open up our hearts to receive that truth. This is the job the Spirit of God done. You know, it's wonderful to know that as we come to know Jesus as our Lord and Saviour, that we're not on our own. We, The minute you come to know uh, Jesus as your Saviour, the Spirit of God comes to dwell in you. 
And he is your helper, is your guide, is your comforter, is your leader. He's a still small voice inside you that when you have decisions to make, he will point you in the right direction. Um, some people say to me, you know, I would love to become a Christian, Andy, but I don't think I could keep it. I'm awake, you know, I'm, I just don't think I could keep it. And you know, you're right. Then people are right. You know, you don't have to keep it on your own because the Spirit of God is there and he's there to empower you to live the way God wants you to live. Think of you about these disciples in the upper room. Wait, Jesus told them to wait from on power from on high. And they're waiting in the upper room. You have Peter who denied Jesus three times before the cross. Denied that he even knew him. You have Thomas who denied that he had risen from the dead. or was a doubter. You had all sorts of different people in there who had their frailties and their weaknesses. Just like you and me. Just like you and me. Yet, when the Spirit of God come, Peter went out onto the street and preached his first sermon. And 3,000 souls were saved. The church hit the street and turn their whole community and the whole known world at that time upside down for Jesus. And that same spirit uh, that was given to them is available to you and I today. That's why the church has went on for as long as it has. It's empowered by the spirit of God. It's empowered by the spirit of life, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of knowledge. That spirit of God has empowered the church to be um, and build this kingdom that has been going on for over 2,000 years. Many people have tried to put the light of the church out, have tried to extinguish it, but it can't because the Spirit of God is there. It's the one who gives the oil. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. It's the Spirit of God who gives you that oil and gives the church that oil uh, to keep it burning. So if you don't know Jesus today as your Lord and Savior and you're wondering, could you keep it or not? No, you have a helper, you have a guide, you have a comfort, you have one who will come and dwell inside you and will lead you and guide you. And believer, be encouraged today. You're not going in uh, to the world tomorrow on your own, whatever you face. You're going in with the, the comforter and the leader and the guide and the teacher right inside you, the Holy Spirit of the living God. So let's look to God today and ask him to fill you afresh with the Spirit as we walk together in this world that we're living. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let's just all close in a word of prayer tonight, folks. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the time we've had tonight. We thank you for your hand upon our lives. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the songs we've sang. We thank you, Lord, for the word that we've heard. And we pray that you, by your spirit, would minister these to your hearts and to your lives tonight. And speak on, Lord, as our voices fall silent. Father, we thank you tonight for uh, bringing Joyce Hall through these last few days, Lord. And we pray that you will continue to keep your hand upon her and continue to strengthen her as she fights against this old virus, Lord, in her body. And we pray, Lord, that you would uh, continue in these next few days to help her to take steps forward in her road to recovery, Lord. We pray that you would drive that old virus away from her body, Lord, and we pray for her complete healing. Uh, we pray for Sam and we pray for uh, Jack, Lord, as they are at home there, Concerned about her, Lord, we pray that you would wrap your arms of love around that wee family, Lord. Father, we also pray for Marlon uh, at this time, Lord, as she comes through this treatment, Lord. She's had her first bite of it, Lord. And there'll be days that she'll be feeling okay and days that she'll not be feeling okay. And we know that as a process, Lord. But we pray, Lord, in all those days, Lord, that she would know your love surrounding her and know your healing touch and know your peace. Pray for Billy as he uh, helps her there in the home, Lord. And in these difficult times we're living and pray for Sharon and the family down there as well, Stuart and the boys and for Andrea and Rachel and we pray that you would draw close to all them Lord as they, they journey this journey together with uh, Marlon Lord, to pour out your spirit upon them Lord and for Maisie up there in Abingdon home Lord we pray for her, we pray that you would continue to keep your hand upon her Lord. Father we thank you for Norma and bring her home Lord to Arthur and we thank you Lord for bringing her through this operation, we thank you Lord for your hand upon her and we pray that you would continue Lord to strengthen her as the days uh, go by Lord and we thank you Lord for bringing all the wee bits and pieces into place that need it to be brought into place to get her home so Lord we have much to thank you for and we thank you for uh, Arthur and Norma back home again together Lord we pray for uh, Joe Montgomery's sister Kathleen Lord we know that she's took a turn for the worse Lord and we pray for Joe and the family circle Lord for Kathleen's family for Joe and for Nessie and for the whole family circle at this time Lord that you would draw ever so close and you would touch lives and touch hearts and comfort them Lord at this time. We pray Lord for we Harry Wilson next door to the hall there who comes to our Sunday school and kids club and he has been struck down with shingles Lord we pray that we thank you Lord that he's a bit better the last couple of days and we pray that you would continue to keep your hand upon him and upon his wee family there and we pray for all the kids that are connected to their Sunday school and their kids club and their families as they stay at home and homeschool and all the challenges that bring we pray, Lord, that you would continue to keep your hand upon them, Lord, and bless them, Lord, and for the, the children that come to our talks group and their parents as well, Lord, for the men's work and the women's work, for everybody that's connected to your hall, Lord, for people today, Lord, who might be uh, and are still suffering the loss of a loved one, that grieving, Lord, that process that you would draw close to them and you would let them know that you're with them, Lord, and you'll never leave them and you'll never forsake them. So, Lord, we just commit ourselves afresh to you right now, knowing that you... Know the beginning from the end and everything in between. 
pour out your spirit upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.